All right, welcome everyone to my senior project. My name is Seamus Woodruff, um, and I built a yurt. But before I get into that, I have to share a little bit of bad news. For anyone who has up till this point looked at the program for this, you'll have seen that this is my senior project. But I have a confession. I didn't build a yurt. Nor did I ever intend to build, it, build a yurt. There seems to have been some miscommunication when this program was being written. <laughs> Instead, <laughs> I built a geodesic dome. <laughs> now you be, may be wondering, what is a geodesic dome? I'll get into that. But first, I want to introduce you to a very special person, and that is Buckminster Fuller. He was an American inventor, systems theorist, author, designer, and architect. He was a very prolific writer, writing over 30 books in various fields, and he de developed numerous inventions, mainly architectural designs, most importantly for tonight, the geodesic dome. Here we see some pictures of various geodesic domes. They are determined by what is known as frequency, or in layman's terms, how many of these poles they have and how many little triangles. <clears throat> I went with the 2V because it was the uh, easiest for me and really the main advantage of having all these poles is structural integrity. But since I wasn't planning on jumping up and down on it too much, I was able to just go with this. So to start, I had 3 quarter of an inch EMT piping, which I cut into about 65 pieces. And you know, it would have been nice if I could have just bolted them all together, but I had to crush them into shape. So for that, I had to build a hydraulic press, which was the most frustrating part of this whole thing. This is a diagram of the basic idea, with this being a simple pump bottle jack and then an aluminum frame. So I got right down to it. There you can see my bottle jack. I began cutting out pieces of aluminum, measuring them up, putting them together, and finally drilling holes in them so I could bolt this whole contraption together. Here's the V1 with a nice aluminum plate for crushing. However, that was not a very exact way to go about it. So instead, I welded this steel crushing top for my thing. And here we see V2. And here is me crushing a few poles. Very exciting. <laughs> However, not very exact way to go about it. The whole press tends to shake around a bit. Can't get very good bends in your poles. Back to the drawing board. Here you can see me with my updated version. Very proud of this. Here's an example of my excellent photography skills. Spot on. So there we go, bent all the poles, took a long time, couldn't feel my hands by the end, probably shouldn't be doing this in winter in a barn. <laughs> then I drilled holes in them, which, uh, you know, for 65 poles and a whole bunch of ends became somewhat mind dulling by the end, but we got through it with the help of my siblings. Now, here we have a little di diagram of how it goes together. We have two separate lengths of poles. We have the A poles and the B poles. The A poles are longer, the B poles are shorter. It's not really as symmetrical a design as you might think with the alternating five stars and then six-sided um, things. So that's the basic design. We started putting it together. Here you can see it laid out on the ground. Got the first level together. It was very cold, so we called it a night because I couldn't feel my hands. Next morning, we got it together like this. Very exciting. Everything was going together great. And um, then I came to the realization that neither myself or my sister is tall enough to get the top on. So <clears throat> I called in my not so vertically challenged friend, Owen Stephanakis. And after constructing the top right here, we put Owen on some step ladders, which unfortunately I don't have pictures of, and made him hold the whole thing over his head while I bolted it together. And here it is, completed, which I was very happy that it all went together without too much uh, struggle and got that together. Here's some tests of its strength. It can hold me. Even more impressively, it can hold my little brother, Dara. Um, so yeah, you may now be wondering, Seamus, 
Why do you build a metal dome? Well, you see, starting out on my project, I knew that what I really wanted was a way to be able to travel and bring something to stay in with me because my greatest aspiration in life is to be a ski bum. So for that, <clears throat> at first I wanted to build a trailer, but trailers are very expensive and take a lot of time and effort and materials. So instead, I thought up my geodesic dome concept, which has the added uh, kind of benefits of being a very lightweight and low material uh, kind of dwelling, so lower impact on the world. So going forward, my next step is going to be to add a cover, something like this, hopefully with the windows, and I'm hoping that I can incorporate a stove some sort and also hopefully solar into it so I can go and ski bum around the co um, country. And here is kind of an idea of what my inside might look like although I highly doubt that it will be that clean with me living inside of it. <laughs> and that is pretty much it. I would love to thank my out-of-school mentor, Adrian Bossy, for helping me along the way with designs and concepts, as well as my in-school mentor, Mr. Lee, for doing his best to keep up with me, even though my communication skills are occasionally lacking when it comes to progress reports. And finally, but very much not least of all, my father for helping me along the way in many, many different ways, whether it be putting up with my whining when it was late at night and I could no longer feel my hands and he was helping me out. So thank you to everyone and also a big thank you to Owen for being tall and holding things in the air. Much appreciated. <laughs>
waterproofed canvas, kind of like what they use for World War II tents, like the big ones. And also, hopefully, some sort of clear plastic like you see there so that I have some natural light coming in. I don't really intend to ever build a yurt. This is what I would like to call my permanent yurt alternative. Um, I honestly think it's a altogether better design, but that's just personal prejudice. Um, as for carrying it around, I personally would not carry it around, but I would love to see someone give it a try. It is really more meant to be transported via vehicle, although if you have a few people and want to carry it, it's not terribly heavy, but for one person, it's not exactly realistic for long stretches. Um, well, I mean, the ins I guess the inspiration was I just saw a YouTube video while I was scrolling through YouTube one day, which was someone building a geodesic dome, and I had been really trying to come up with a way that I could build something that was portable, but also made a big enough livable space for me to travel with it. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, that's awesome. Because yurts are pretty cool, but domes are even cooler. And uh, so I was just like, this seems really cool. And I talked to my dad about it, and he thought that it was definitely doable. So I dove in and went for it. 